readers, it's Sasha and today I am going to be talking about the books that I have read over the past couple of months. So over the past few months I have read, well two months, I've read 17 books and I have DNF'd three but I like to talk about the ones I DNF because I think it's fun so we're going to talk about all 20 of those today. So we're going to start with the first book that I read in January. I think I read this for my I read seven books in seven days vlog so I'll link that in the description but I read You Won't Know I'm Gone by Kristen Orlando. This was the sequel in the Black Angels Chronicle which it chronicles which I started on New Year's Eve and I gave this four stars. It was good. It was a really good story however the main character was the most annoying human being on this earth. She was so self-righteous and she had such a savior complex and I just hated everything about her and I really didn't like how she kept putting everyone in danger when she knew it was putting everyone in danger and I just really didn't like her and I don't think the story was necessarily fantastic because it did keep repeating itself. It was, I think her name's Regan? Regan? Yes, it is. It is? It is. Regan was training and then she was getting everyone else into trouble and then she was training and then she was getting everyone else into trouble. The pattern was there but I still really liked the story. There were no mentions of Hymens anymore which was peak literature so we'll put it there next i ended up reading the start of me and you by emory lord and this book i gave five out of five stars so cute i absolutely adored this this was about Paige, and her first boyfriend died tragically in an accident and so she's been grieving his death for the past year and trying to come to terms with it all and then she ends up meeting this guy and they end up hanging out at Quiz Bowl. Which is like so cool. And there's just, oh, this is just so cute. Everything in the story just was perfect to me. I absolutely loved the characters. I loved the dynamics between not just the main character and the love interest, but also between the friendship group because that friendship group was so cute. Like they just had such a great bond and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really well done story. I thought everything added to the story in a really nice way. I just really enjoyed reading about Paige and Max and their friends. I thought it was really cute. I really really liked the idea of having Paige who is so young dealing with this type of grief and having this group around her to support her and help her and it was just really cute and I really want it to be made into a movie and that's that. So that was this book and I loved it. And this was also in the vlog, I think, probably. So check that out. The next book that I read in 2021 was A Danger to Herself and Others by Alyssa B. Shine Mel. And this is about a girl who is accused of murdering her best friend. And so she is sent to live in kind of a rehab facility for teenagers with mental illnesses and mental disorders and stuff like that. But the entire time, like she doesn't actually believe she has a mental disorder and she's being held against her will and all of this stuff. And yeah, it was a wild ride. I gave it four out of five stars. I really liked it but I realized that I really don't like the unreliable narrator because she was giving me so much stress and anxiety because I didn't know if what actually happened was real and I didn't know if she was just saying things and I was just it was really like it was really good if you like that kind of story but it was really stressful for me because I guess I don't like that kind of story but I thought it was really well done the house that they were staying in not house but like building they were staying in was in like the California mountains and it was really cool and I just really liked it it was a good story it was a good book we love to see it and that's that so the next book that I ended up reading was The Map From Here to There by Emery Lord this is the sequel to the start of me and you duology thing and I didn't like this that much. I Well, I did like I didn't hate it. It was 3.5 out of 5 stars. That's what I gave it. But I didn't like the fact that this was realistic. And I know that sounds bad, but when I'm reading a book, I don't want to be reminded of real world stresses and like anxieties about college and, and keeping in touch with friends from high school and all this stuff. Like I already went through that. I don't want to read about that again. And then that's exactly what this was about. This brought on a lot more drama, a lot more chaos, a lot more stupid fights between the friends that just did not need to happen. And I just really missed the dynamics that they had in the first book. But because this book is so realistic and it definitely wrote it in a powerful and, and an important way, I I couldn't give it less than that but I just didn't really like the story and I wish it had stayed as a standalone. The next book that I ended up reading was Fable by Adrian Young and this is a book that I buddy read kind of sort of with Amanda from Ginger Snap Reads and I say kind of sort of because I read it in like two days and she read it in like two weeks so she just kind of messaged me when she got to cool parts and that was how we buddy read this but Fable is about this girl 
who is left on an island by her father after her mother dies and her father tells her to find her way back to him and so she's trying to do that and what else happens i don't really okay so then fable is the girl's name she finds this person and they help her get off the island and they travel the sea and she kind of can do something magical but not really even though this is a fantasy okay with all of that being said i did give this 3.5 out of 5 stars i did start liking this about halfway through to the point where i am invested and i would want to pick up the sequel but i i had so many so many issues with this so maybe the 3.5 rating is just really generous but that's fine it just had so much potential the cover was beautiful the premise was interesting but i just feel like the execution was off starting this book kind of felt like i was put in the middle of a book and it was just like I felt like there was so much information I was missing yet I was expected to know what it was and that was really difficult to get my bearings and she also spent a lot of time underwater and it just I don't understand how she didn't die even though I guess she did have a magical ability but it had nothing to do with water it had everything to do with gems I think so I don't know how she didn't die the relationship was weird and it was forced and I didn't like it it was very cheesy and not the good kind of cheese it was just not good what did I even like about this book because this sounds really negative so I guess halfway through I did feel like it did get better and I was more invested in the story and in the plot and I wanted to figure out what was happening but I did just feel a little bit let down with this so so next I ended up reading Lore by Alexandra Bracken so I read this for the Winers Book Club I also read this because I really wanted to read it but that's beside the point I liked it but I didn't love it I just thought it was okay I thought it was a really okay book I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars because there were some elements that I really enjoyed but there were also some elements that I feel were lacking given the fact that I like Alexandra Bracken's writing so much I was anticipating a lot more out of this but I, just, I was just let down. I thought the pacing was okay I thought it was at times it was going a little bit too fast and I was kind of like what is happening and there were also times where I was like this is like the same thing that's happened four times in a row like we need to move on but overall i feel like the pacing was okay for me and i also enjoyed the greek mythology and the different takes on greek mythology i did not say what this is about this is about a girl named lore who is a descendant of a line of god people i think and they okay every seven years the agon happens and they like i think it's nine gods are sent to walk down on earth and live as mortals and then these hunters have to hunt them and lore is descendants of the hunters and if you hunt them and kill them you can gain their power so that's a thing lore's family was killed in the hunt seven years ago so she's kind of given up that but then an old friend and one of the last remaining gods comes and seeks out her help so the premise sounds cool it sounds a lot cooler if i knew what i was talking about but it is cool but unfortunately just the execution wasn't that great lore herself was a very two-dimensional character she didn't really have anything to give the story i just feel like it would have been better had we had somebody else as the main character one of the other characters within the story could have been the main character and it easily could have gone the same or better and that's never great when it comes to a main character in a story there were a lot of plot holes and i just it was fine it was okay it was good it kept me entertained but it did take me a long time to read because it is very chunky she's a very chunky book and the dust jacket's on wrong but overall this is just okay it was that's it it's, it's okay next i ended up picking up redux by al davro and this was the second book to another book i started in the i read seven books in seven days reading vlog and i was extremely disappointed with this this book i gave 2.5 out of 5 stars it is a continuation of the nexus duology so it's the final book and essentially nexus is about in the future what happens when you can like modify your looks and you have robots as like servants and stuff like that and then things happen and a war breaks out because of course this was disappointing on every level because i really enjoyed nexus i gave it four out of five stars but this just simply did not do it for me the writing in this was not great i it almost felt like it was written by two different people the stories or the the two different books because the writing in the first book was so good and then this was just so choppy and all over the place and i was really unimpressed and the main character thought she was hot shit and she just simply was not and so that was annoying and I just don't like where it ended. Like, I don't like the, the way it played out. I don't like how it played out. I just think overall the story was lacking and it made me really sad because I thought I really was going to love this, but I didn't. But it's still a good 
series-ish, I guess, and a lot of people like this more than the first one, but they're wrong. So the next book that I ended up, oh my gosh, I forgot to talk about one that I DNF'd. So I ended up DNFing Our Year of Maybe, but it was essentially about this girl and this guy, and this guy needed a kidney transplant and this girl was able to, so she did, but then she started acting like he owed her for doing it and he didn't really like her in that way. Like they were friends, but he didn't want to be with her. He wanted to be with somebody else. And the book probably could have worked for me had I given it more of a chance, but I didn't enjoy the way it was written from the start and they started talking about have they ever thought about it and the it being sex and they were like 14 and 15 and I was just like, this is way before my time. So I was just like, I'm just gonna, or after my time, after my time. So I'm just gonna take it back to the library and be done with it, but yes. I did do that. The next book that I read to completion was The Crowns of Croswald by D.E. Knight and this is the continuation to a series I started in like May last year and it was okay. I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars again. It was a good story and it had a couple more elements that I overall enjoyed but it didn't really do much for me. The world building was a lot better in this one than in the first one which is something that I was really excited about but overall the story itself still fell pretty flat and the characters were all very naive and boring at times so I just I liked it. It was good. It wasn't great. That's it. The next book that I ended up not reading, DNFing, was Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Bronte? Bronte? I will never know. I did not like this the plot where was she i don't know the story was weird i don't know i'm just not a classics person i really tried i really tried and i'm sorry but it's just not gonna work we're not gonna work it wasn't me it was her then i read ash princess by laura sebastian this book my mom is currently reading because it was so good so i had to pass it on i gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars i really enjoyed this so this is about a girl named theodasia Theodosia. Theodosia. Sorry. Her whole family was killed and she was taken prisoner in her own kingdom when these people came and colonized their kingdom and now she is kind of used as a person that the Kaiser who is now in charge will like beat up if anybody does anything wrong or if people try to rebel. So it's a way to make the original people from this city feel like they have to obey because they don't want to see their queen get hurt. So that's what happens. And I love this so much. The only reason it wasn't five stars for the first book was that Theodosia was not my favorite character. At first, like, she was, I don't know, there was just something off about her character that I didn't vibe with a lot, and there was unnecessary cat death. I don't like that, because animals don't deserve that. Kill humans, that's fine. Well, don't, but like, you know, in books. Don't kill animals because they don't serve anything to the plot. It doesn't. It didn't. Li literally did nothing. But yeah, that's that. Really loved it. 4.5 out of 5 stars. I did read the other two books, so I will talk about those as well. Next, I ended up reading The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, and this was the best book I think I read this year. It was so good. Okay, it was about this guy and this girl who were uh, maid of honor and best man at their respective siblings weddings but they didn't actually like each other and then the entire wedding party and everybody at the wedding gets taken down by a shellfish buffet that olive the girl's name is couldn't eat because she's allergic and ethan didn't want to eat because he's a germaphobe and so the bride and groom had won a honeymoon to hawaii that was non-refundable the dates were non-exchangeable and so the sister the bride was like olive you should go you should go because you're my twin sister you look like me and you could totally pass as me and then she did and she's like yeah sure and then the brother ethan is like i'm also going so they end up going together but they don't like each other but they have to share a room and it's just so good it was so good it was so cute the wit the banter, the tension, the chemistry. I was so on board the entire time. I just loved this so much. I finished this book with the biggest and stupidest smile on my face that I could because I just loved it so much. And I just want nothing more than for Olive and Ethan to be together forever, even though they're fictional. So yeah. Next, I ended up reading Lady Smoke by Laura Sebastian, which is book two in the Ash Princess trilogy. And this was a five and five stars for me. I absolutely loved this. I thought it was better than the first one. Theodosia's character was a lot better and the world building was also really, really well done. And I just loved it. It was so good. Okay. And then I also read Ember Queen by Laura Sebastian, which was the third book. And that was also five to five stars. I thought the conclusion was brilliant. I thought everything about it was really well done. I thought the twists and the turns that Laura Sebastian decided to incorporate into the story were really well done. I didn't think they were going to happen and I just loved it. So good. 10 out of 10. Next, I ended up reading Sick Kids in Love by Anna Moskowitz and this was also a 5 out of 5 star read for me. This was about a girl who had rheumatoid arthritis. She was like 16, I think, and it's about a guy who has geishers, geishas, something disease, which is a very rare genetical, genetical, <laughs> 
a very rare genetic disorder. And so this whole story is about them. Obviously the title says sick kids falling in love or sick kids in love. So it's about them falling in love, but it also has really important discussions on what it's like to live with an invisible illness as well as a visible illness as a teenager. And there aren't a lot of chronic illness representation within young adult, I don't think. And there's definitely not enough. And so it was nice to see this and it was nice to see the discussions that were brought up. And a lot of Own Voices reviewers were really happy with this as well. So I loved it. I thought it was really good. But it didn't start off really good. It started off really boring, but it worked its way up and I liked it. Next, I read a book that should be burned is Conviction by Denise Mina. This book we read for the Winers Book Club and literally no one liked it. Everybody gave it one star. We all hated it. I will leave the live show for this as well as lore in the description because that was, it was really great. The live show was literally the best live show I think we've had. It was so funny. Anyway, this book, do I even know what it's about? It's about a girl who's, okay, there are like four different, three different stories going on. So it's about a girl whose husband is leaving her and she She's really into true crime podcasts and so while her husband is leaving her she is listening to this podcast and she realizes that the person that has died is somebody that she met for a week nine years ago during smoke breaks that she had at a hotel and they were accusing him of killing himself and she said no he would never do that I knew him so well for that one week nine years ago and that was that her and the husband of the girl who her husband was leaving her for went on a journey to find out what actually happened. And it was the stupidest book ever. It was so dumb. The writing was absolute, it was so choppy. It was not it at all. The characters were horrible people. The eating disorder representation was disgusting. Like they would make fun of anorexia. And I just like, I just, oh. And I just, I literally hated this. I hated this book so much. It was so stupid and made no sense. The ending made no sense. Every thriller is supposed to come together in a nice way. And this did just simply did not do that. And it just was not good. It was such a bad book and I just didn't like it. Yes. And if you follow me on Twitter and you are confused as to what my Twitter handle is and why it says a potent review, Nancy, just watch the Winers Live show because it has something to do with this. Next, I ended up DNFing a book and it's not a book that I want to hard DNF. I want to go back to it, but Conviction put me in such a mood where I was just like, I don't want to read this. And that was The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Janata Petrus. And this is a really, like, it was a good book. Like, it was, re it was reading well. It was interesting. It's about two girls who end up coming together and falling for each other. One from Trinidad, who is being sent to the United States because her mother found her with the pastor's granddaughter, I believe it was, in a compromising position. And the other is a girl in the United States who happens to be the daughter of the person who the first girl is going to stay with. Best friend, I think it is. And I just really could not get into the story. I just could not get into it. Conviction put me in such a place where I was like, I only want to read a very specific thing. And I just was sad. So unfortunately, I did not continue reading it, but I do plan on picking it up again at some point. It's just a book that I had to DNF for this month. So instead of reading that one, I decided to pick up a book that was just available at my library. And that was Tell Me How You Really Feel by Amina May Safi. And this is about a girl and she is like perfect. And she just everybody thinks she's fantastic she's head cheerleader everything about her screams like perfect preppy girl and there's this other girl named Rachel who is a scholarship girl she's very reserved about herself and she's making films like that's her thing so she's making a student film and she realizes that okay I need to find a better main character and that main character needed to be Santa and Santa was like the first girl that had asked Rachel out and Rachel thought that it was a joke so she was hesitant to ask her and if that makes sense but I really like this I thought it was really well done I gave this 4.5 5 stars it was so good they both had their own distinct voices which is so rare in young adult contemporary especially one that's so short so that was nice and I just feel like their story wrapped up really well it had a really great ending for what it was and I just thought it was a good story it was feel good and it got me more into the reading mood so that was nice next I read Of Ice and Shadows by Audrey Coulters this is the second book in the of fire and stars duology series i don't know <sighs> i don't know this i gave three to five stars this disappointed me in a lot of ways i really wanted to love this i really liked the first book i thought it was really good i can't remember if i gave it a four or 4.5 but i just thought it was a really well done story it was very sapphic and i loved it it was about a girl who's betrothed to this guy but ends up falling in love with his sister instead and she also has this magical fire element as well and i just hated how this story ended up playing out it was rushed in all the places where it shouldn't have been like the ending was really rushed and there was also like a really epic fight scene and i 
want to say epic fight scene but like I can't because it was only like three paragraphs and then it was over and it was just like we've been working up to this but okay sure the characters annoyed me Mare especially like she really pissed me off a lot this book I just wanted to punch her upside the head she was dumb she was stupid she was arrogant she was ignorant all the words that you could be it was just she was not great and I just I was just disappointed she also introduced so much toward the end of the book and she also isn't sure if she has any more plans to write a third book so it's just like don't introduce a bunch more into your story if you don't think you're gonna write another book like it just it doesn't make sense and so this wasn't like a great way to end a series and so I just didn't like it and I liked it like it was okay like there were some really interesting plot points there were some interesting moments but I just feel like it wasn't nearly as good as the first one and the last book I read the the book that has ended my month on a really not high note the upside of unrequited by Becky Albertalli I did not like this book okay I might be one of the only people that didn't this is about a girl named Molly who is fat and we have to know this because literally every five seconds she mentions it so yeah she's fat and she has had lots and lots of crushes but never actually goes for any of them because fat girls can't date and fat girls can't be in love and all this stuff and then her sister, who is like this crazy, wild, into girls, partier, is like, you should go out with this boy and all this stuff. And so she is torn between two boys that seem to might have interest in her, maybe. And so she is dealing with that. And I didn't like this book. I feel like this book could have done a lot for plus size women. And I'm not saying that the feelings that the main character had were invalid because I definitely know that I felt some of them and I definitely had some of those feelings before where it's, you know, it's harder for a fat person to find love, especially as a teenager. I felt it. I, I understand. However, that was all that this character had going for her. Like there was literally nothing else redeeming about her except that she could do crafts. And I just feel like it was such a waste of potential where this could have been so much more for plus size teenagers. And maybe this works for some people. It obviously does because I know a lot of people who have rated it five stars. But for me, it just didn't work because the way that she feels beautiful is by having boys fall for her. And it should never be that way. Like, you shouldn't want to feel beautiful for somebody else and for these other people. Like you should want to feel beautiful for you. You should feel beautiful for you. So it was really disheartening when the way that this story was was that in order for her to feel beautiful she had to have boys like her and I just thought that was really like it was just such a cheap way of doing it I just didn't like it so yes there were points that I liked like it was very easy to read I read it yesterday <laughs> like it was so easy to read it was simple it was quick there were some moments I liked where everybody was hanging out together and it was just funny and there were some really positive sexual remarks that talked about um, birth control and safe sex and there was actually like a dialogue between these two characters about what it means to have sex and how it shouldn't just mean penetration and that was really interesting and really important to read about and so that was great but overall I just did not like what this did for fat people and the representation that I feel like is still needed so yeah that is it. These are the 17 books that I read and three books that I DNF'd. If you've read any of these books, let me know. Let me know how you felt about them. I know for sure that some of these are more popular than others, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. But yes, thank you for tuning into this video. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. I do post twice a week, and there's going to be some fun videos coming up in March that you're not going to want to miss out on. And until next time, bye readers!